Hi, hello, welcome to Spell Day. We're covering a spell every single day of the year from the 5 EPHB plus 3. Those plus 3 spells are homebrew spells. We're at plus 1 at the moment. We can get back in the playlist to find it. Today's spell is Meld into Stone. <laughs> He's in the wall. Third level transmutation, ritual, casting time of one action, range of touch, components, verbal, somatic, duration, eight hours. You step into a stone object or surface large enough to fully contain your body, melding yourself and all the equipment you carry into the stone for the duration. Using your movement, you step into the stone at a point you can touch. Nothing of your presence remains visible or otherwise detectable by non-magical senses. While merged into the stone, you can't see what occurs outside of it, and any wisdom perception checks you make to hear sounds outside of it are made with disadvantage. You remain aware of the passage of time and can cast spells on yourself while merged in the stone. Wow. You can use your movement to leave the stone where you entered it, which ends the spell you otherwise can't move. Minor physical damage to the stone doesn't harm you, but its partial destruction or change in its shape, to the extent that you no longer fit within it, expels you and deals 66 bludgeoning damage to you. The stone's complete destruction or transmutation into a different substance expels you and deals 50 bludgeoning damage to you. Oh my god. If expelled, you fall prone in an unoccupied space closest to where you first entered. Statues. Statues everywhere. There's gonna be a ton of statues of people. This is such a good excuse for magical spies. I mean, any stone garden or maze. Like, come on. It doesn't even have to be an exact replica of you, it just has to be something that can fit you. So, any kind of large stone statue of someone, or face, or stone wall. Though, does it have to be an entirely smooth surface? I think so, because it says a stone object. So it can't be like cobblestone road or buildings. It has to be like one big solid concrete thing rock thing also the fact it's not concentration for eight hours and a ritual so you do have to like get out of it after eight hours but you can stay there for quite a while and just hop out 10 minutes again casting it for the ritual hop back in no expended material components no expended spell slot you can just keep doing that back and forth with only a small window there where you can be spotted. You don't even have to be next to it when you're casting this. You can be away, walk up to the stone, and then just spend that movement to go into it. Now, you can't move in the stone. Like, wherever you enter, you're kind of just stuck in that relative position, and then you can walk back out of it. You can't walk into stone and then move throughout the entire, like, let's say, a mountain range. No, you come out of the same surface you entered in. You're aware of the passage of time, and you can barely hear things. You can't see but you have disadvantage on perception checks, which also still means your passive perception works, it just has a minus five to it. So stealth to the extent of having some kind of spy and stone statue or rock or any kind of stone surface. The other big thing is stuff that doesn't affect stone. You might be able, if you know a dragon breath is coming, you can just use that five feet of movement to head into the floor or the wall or the ceiling. The fire breath goes off on the rest of the party and you come back out the next turn because that didn't affect the stone. It didn't break it, it, I mean, unless it's like acid breath that might do some damage to it, or some of the other breath weapons might do things, but if it's a general fire breath, that's not really going to affect stone. Besides, you can even take a little bit of damage, it just, actually, depending on whatever stone surface you're heading to, you can take a lot of damage. It just gets to the point where it can't physically hold your form anymore, so if you go into a cave wall, that's going to take a lot before it can't hold you. <laughs> the statue scenario might not take that much. And 66 bludgeoning damage, while that hurts a bit, especially around the level where you get it, it's not the worst. I mean, it has a minimum of six damage. That's not that bad. But the if it's transmuted or entirely destroyed, flat 50 for bludgeon, not force, bludgeoning damage. That that one hurts a bit more. Also, it also God. Also, it knocks you prone. So any if there's still creatures that can attack or have action economy or turns before yours, you've been knocked out of your cover and invulnerability for a moment and can just be wailed upon. Oh, that's also another point. You can't be targeted by anything else as well. Not only are you out of the area of effect of the um, fire breath example, but any kind of spell that requires sight or specified target, they can't hit you. You're in a rock. Man, now I'm trying to think of using this as a defensive option. Or even like deep diving. Like get on a boat, have some kind of slab or a crane with a big rock in it, head into the inside of it. Would you die of pressure? Because if you then you stepped out of the rock, you didn't have any of the time to adjust. Hmm. Well, this is a... Uh... Okay, so I, I do remember this being brought up in comments before in relation to some other spells. I can't remember in particular which spells, and I can't remember specifically the combos, or why it was broken. 
but I feel like I'm not tapping into the full potential of this in this one video. And I feel like it'll take a long time to tap into its full potential. Like, especially since it's not concentration and it's ritual, you can easily combo this with other spells. As, not even that, you can cast spells on you while within the rock. I forgot to even touch upon that. Now, to be fair, you can't cast spells on anything else while within the rock, but anything that has touch or self, you can, or even range to an extent, as long as it's targeting you. Oh, how funky could that get? What could you get away with? Now I'm just thinking of a bunch of assassins with this cast on them. They're all hiding in a wall, waiting to ambush people walking through it. And whoop, sorry, there's now like eight assassins surrounding you, all flanking as you're walking down this tunnel. Yikes. Unlikely, but still something you can do and get away with it. You can do this on a dragon. Because there's no size, there's not like, oh, a medium creature. You just have to find a stone surface large enough. A dragon, <laughs> a dragon in their own cave layer or mountain layer touching against the side, and then shifting into it. And coming back out. Oh god. But the whole idea of an ancient dragon facing out of a rock, hitting you, and then going back in? You can cast spells that can affect you, which includes teleport. Any kind of teleport that doesn't require sight to a point within range, and doesn't take you, like, affecting a space like Teleportation Circle, you can just get out of there. And then everyone's prepped and holding actions around a wall, waiting for the eight hours to run out or dispelling it, or mining, or chipping away at it. But man, the, the idea of a dragon just arises. <laughs> the, the, the image in my head of just a dragon, like, no-clipping through a wall with its breath weapon, then going back in until it recharges. Oh, that's nasty. 8 out of 10? 9 out of 10? 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Because you are still heavily limited within the rock. You're a lot more nimble with Meld into Stone than I thought you were, and especially because it's a ritual? I didn't know this was a ritual. I also thought it was concentration. And self? But man, I, where did I get those for this spell? 8 out of 10. Just for the weird ambush and potential situ... Um, see you in the comments. Nope, we're talking right now. So, uh, about that 8 out of 10 situation and the video itself. A good about, like, half the video was scrapped. Uh, because I misread part of the spell. The rest of it was fine. It still applied to the spell in general afterwards, but... Oh, uh, God. Some of it... Uh, the previous misinterpretation of the spell, I still agree with, would have been 8 out of 10. But taking into account that misstep... Uh, and a few of the other things to clarify. Again, because it was also cut as well when it's the assassins, it's arcane tricks. And when it's to dragons, I in in the campaigns I run, I have spell casting dragons. So a dragon casting meld into stone is actually a feasible thing. So that's where that came in. Though then also the teleport situation where because why wouldn't you teleport's already in action? Why wouldn't you just catch catch? Why wouldn't you just cast teleport or some other Location spell that's also an action instead of using a spell slot in action on Meld into Stone, then a teleport spell when you could just do the teleport spell first. Anywho, uh, three out of not three, four out of ten. Four out of ten because it's still useful in those ambush scenarios, if a little difficult to get to, and still a capable of spying. You can get creative with it, namely because of the defense, it can also add your character. But yeah, four out of ten.